Hello, friends. Isn't it time that we talked about our whole functions, define and use? Okay, let's get on those whole functions. Okay, first, let's power up with an ADX 15 from American Rotary. I'm going to move that uh, idler motor outside. It sounds extra loud in here because it's up close to the wall there. So it's going into the doghouse. Okay, let's define and use our whole functions on the jig board. Okay, on the boom cam, yeah. Okay, we're going to do three holes for that uh, collet chuck. So we're going to define the hole. We want three holes. I don't know, this thing kind of flashes on the camera. We've got three, three holes. We'll enter that. Center on X looks good. Center on Y looks good. Radius 2.125. That's correct. We'll enter that, starting angle, zero, end angle, 120 degrees because it's three holes. Okay, so we'll enter that. Now we're ready. So now we use hole number one. <laughs> Here we go, hole number one. Almost there. I always go too far. I just love the DROs on machines like this. Okay, that's good. Within a hundred million, we'll call it good. We'll flip the nine, put in some locks here. Put it in here. We are in gear. Click on my uh, digital tag. See where we're at. Clicking that on to get the loop real quick here. 460. That's broken. Okay. I think I can go about 800,000 steps on these holes. So we'll get to it. Okay, I'm going to set this on scale at zero. Anyway, it's gone. Looking real good here. Material cuts like butter. Then we're going to move on that from the finish. Looks good right there. Okay, still going on the camera, so we will use and go to hole two. I'm using the non-influencing locks, and we'll go to hole two. The hole's functioning, but uh, I'm not. Right in the 
digital age here. 100 units. No. That's good. I can set that all for another ditch, but it drives me crazy. Okay, how are we looking good? Now you see this hand wheel on this jig bar? That's all you've got. So uh, in reality, you're not going to drill a hole over uh, one half inch in steel without like uh, hanging off this wheel. So what you have to do is step holes out. 800 thousands, gonna go to use hole number three. here and I'll be back. Hey, I had my end angle wrong, so I got one extra hole. I might have to put another on the other side for balance. But uh, I don't use this enough. Okay, here we go. Gonna drill hole number two right where it should be. smoother with that rotary converter. I'm expecting some better surface finishes out of these machines. What do we got here? Looking good. I'm better on track than I was. Jet bore is not using. Terrible. Alright. I think I'm just fine with that extra hole because uh, some of the holes that were put in here were for them for a good anyway. <laughs> I don't think I'll have much problem with uh, balance, but if I do, I'll balance it. Okay, I'm gonna get this thing uh, more set up on the machine. Uh, I gotta chase down a tap and tap these holes, and we'll get it back, uh, get the truck on it, and check it out and see how it does. Okay, I gotta feed Chloe too, so excuse me. <laughs> well, the old jig bore. Let me grab a head here. 
The, uh, the shanks uh, have a screw thread on them and they screw in so there's no reverse. So you don't do any power tapping using the spindle reverse because there's no spindle reverse. So I'm just going to use this tap handle and I'm going to guide it in with that center here and do the last hole for that collet chuck. Just guide it in like that. So it's nice to have the last hole going there. This spiral flute tap, I don't have to reverse it. And it's a tight H limit tap too. So I'm using a oh, 5 16 so fine thread Allen head screws to secure this chuck. I had the end angle wrong, so I went ahead and, and drilled uh, a, a six hole pattern. <laughs> but I'm only using three of them. I go, well, it's not hurting anything. In the case I strip out a hole, I guess I could just move it on over, huh? Okay. I'm going to back a little bit. Then I want to go as deep as possible. And I think I'll have it on the first uh, shot here without a bottoming tap. All the way to the bottom. They push it the chips forward, so I'll have to dig the chips out. There we go. There was a company in California called Reliable Tool. And uh, you could buy a lot of surplus uh, aerospace stuff from them back in the, oh gosh, I guess the 90s, early 2000s. And it's like I bought a pound or two pounds or three pounds of different uh, spiral flute taps. Some of them been used once, maybe twice, some of them not at all. But uh, I'm still using them. Okay. Well, I'm going to get that uh, back on the lathe. It's a little bit of a tight fit. So I'm going to tighten it and loosen it and tighten it and loosen it a few times and get it settled in there. Take a very light skim on there, then mount the truck and we'll see how it's doing. Okay, this thing's finally done and it's running a thousandths true within a thousandths. And I think that's pretty darn good. So I'll put this thing to use, and uh, this is the last uh, chuck I have to put on here, and I think I'll find that quite useful. Yeah, just about the last go on that uh, back plate, I think. But <laughs> that worked pretty good. Okay, back with more soon. Hey, here it is evening. It's just beautiful. And my last video started this morning uh, right here. But uh, I was asked about the uh, Armstrong planer tracks that are uh, sitting on the windowsill by the axis and lathe. And I have a story about them and I will share with you. Now, here they are. I got two each. This one is an Armstrong number one and this one is an Armstrong number two cast steel heavy duty planer jet. And what I had to do, I bought these on eBay, 200 bucks. I don't know what it costs for the four of them. I haven't priced them lately, but this was a couple years ago. So what I had to do with these, now you see this thing right here, if you can make it out, well the head was over here all the way over and totally jammed 
Now, it glides on these bearings, and I showed in an earlier video how the head locks, because there's a sharp angle down here, and it pulls up. So those glide bearings somehow got jammed up, and jammed the head up. And you can see uh, in uh, the still pictures I put up this uh, drill press just how rusted it was. So the head was stuck over here and it wasn't going to move. And luckily nobody busted the gear in the hand wheel trying to do it. So what I had to do is uh, I took a grinder and you can't see it. It took and just ground right into there because the head was here, see? I can move it back a little bit, but I don't think it will just leave. And I had to grind a pad for this uh, screw jack, planter jack, to sit in here and the other one here. Okay. And the two small ones I had on the back because his head wraps around with the drive spline and there's a spot between here and the back of the head. And I had these two jacks back there. And what I had to do is walk the head. I had to push it like this, and then I had to push it like that. And it moved about 50 thousandths a time doing that. And it took me days. I could only do it for a couple hours a day, and I just gave up on it. And this almost trashed this uh, machine, but that's what I had to do. I had to walk that head over, until I could get it just about that far and use a mirror and a modified um, torch tip that I cut and extended. It's just a brazing tip, a small one. And I got it back in there and burnt that bearing out. You know, just heated it up and melted it until uh, I could get a punch back there and uh, break it up. And uh, then I had to do the same to this side. But I couldn't get that back one, no way, all from that side. So it was do or die getting the head over far enough with this, you know, clean the rust the best I could, used coil, used everything, used beeswax, used heat, and also on the back, the drive spline has a gear, and water got in there and rusted that gear. So I had that back cover off, and I was heating up the uh, body of that gear, trying not to destroy it, melting beeswax in it and stuff like that, and walked that head over and uh, got it so I could burn those bearings out. And that's the rest of the story there. Now I got to take the entire head off and uh, and uh, replace those bearings and also got a bit of debris in there from burning those bearings that's leaving scratches so the whole head has to come off get cleaned those bearings replaced can't even identify the bearings until I get the head off so there we go Okay, now I'm taking a break from that uh, collet chuck I've been kicking around and uh, I come out here and work, you know, when I can. And it's really nice to be out here right now. It's just lovely. I'll turn, I'll turn the camera around and uh, here, let, I don't have to take it off. Hope you're all doing good today. Yeah. Yeah, just a nice time. Everything's real green here little too green. <laughs> I'd still have to do that weed eating. The yard will come last on this house. There's just so much to do uh, uh, on an old house like these old machines. It's almost like you'll never get done. But, you know, you just keep stabbing at it. Okay.